Last week, I turned 20, a long new decades ahead of me now, but you'd be surprised to hear that in Korea, I already turned 20 over a year and a half ago. How is that possible? Introducing Korean age explained. If you're watching this video, you probably use just one way to track your age, which is you are zero when you're born and you age every year on your birthday. Sound familiar? Well, this isn't exactly the case in Korea. In Korea, we use not one, not two, but three different ways to keep track of our age. Why is that necessary, you might ask? We'll get to that in a moment. But first, let's talk about these three systems. The first and most obvious is the one I mentioned earlier. You are zero when you're born and you age every year on your birthday. Day. We'll call this international age or western age, whichever floats your boat. This is probably the one you use if you're not Korean. The second method is a topic of this video, Korean age. In this system, you are one when you're born and you gain a year not on your birthday, but every new year. So basically every January 1st. It doesn't matter which month you were born in. And here's the most common question I always get from people. Then if you were born on December 31st, do you turn two the very next day? And the answer is yes, because the next day happens to be the new year. Congratulations on your second day of life. You've been promoted to being a two year old, how does it feel? Then what if you were born on January 1st? Then tough luck, you'd have to wait another 365 days to turn two. And this is the same reason why in Korea, those born on January 1st and those born on December 31st of the same year are the same age. In Korean, this method translates to counting age. In other words, you are literally counting the number of different years you've lived in. For example, those born in 2002 have lived through 21 different years from 2002, 2003, all the way to the current 20. 22, which is why their Korean age would be 21. That would be me. Or you could use this much simpler formula, current year minus birth year plus one. You'd get 21 the same way. Thanks to Korean age, it becomes a lot easier to group people up. For example, if you were talking about 21 year olds in 2022, you'd be referring to anybody all born in the same year of 2002. This wouldn't work for international age because your age would depend on if your birthday is passed already or not. Here are some differences between Korean and international age. Koreans use international age for official purposes. For example, if you were filling out an official document and it asked you to write down your age, you would put down your international age. Korean age, on the other hand, is pretty unofficial. It's used purely for convenience and in everyday situations, like when someone asks you how old you are. And yes, we still do celebrate our birthdays. Just because we use Korean age doesn't mean birthday parties are automatically eliminated. As a result, there's always a one or two year gap between Korean and international age. Some people think Korean age is always international age plus one, but that's not always true. Taking me as an example, I'm 21 in Korea this year. If my birthday hadn't passed yet, I'd still be 19 internationally, making a two-year gap. But since I already celebrated my 20th birthday, the gap comes down to one year. As a result, this gap always fluctuates depending on the time of year. But here's some food for thought. Let's say Korea wanted to target people of a certain age for laws or restrictions of some sort. For instance, Korea's Youth Protection Act, which defines juveniles as anyone under 19. In 2022, that would target people born in 2003. Well, Korean age can't be used here because as I mentioned earlier, it's not official. And using international age would be confusing because some people born in 2003 would still be 18, while some others are 19 if they passed their birthday. So what Korea did was that they just decided to make the third and final age system, the middle ground of Korean and international age, called year age. Year age is basically Korean age, except when you're born, you're zero, not one. Or for much simpler calculation, current year, minus birth year. Year age really means what age you'll become in that year. For example, in 2023, I'll be turning 21. So my year age in 2023 would be 21. Korea uses year age for age related rules, such as TV program ratings and age groups for COVID vaccines. But a very good example is the legal drinking age. For Koreans, they can buy or consume alcohol starting from the beginning of the year they turn 19, which is basically saying 19 in year age. This way, people can start drinking from January 1st, even if they hadn't passed their 19th birthday yet, which is a huge difference to those in the US or Canada who desperately wait for their birthdays to come. So it's a huge win for Koreans born in late months like December because they can get an insane head start. Going back to the example where someone's born on December 31st, they can drink alcohol the day after their 18th birthday. Crazy, right? Since Koreans use Korean age very commonly, they might say that the legal drinking age is 20. It's the same thing really because year age is Korean age minus one. In my Duolingo Korean speedrun video, which you should definitely check out, I didn't mention the year age system because it's not insanely common other than the specific purposes it was made for. In my experience, Korean age and international age 
are far more often used than year age. So why do Koreans still use Korean age? Why isn't it gone? I'd say it's because of honorifics and hierarchy that exists in Korean society. Uh, let me explain what I mean. Age is a very important subject in Korea. If someone's older than you, you were expected to use honorifics or formal language when talking to them. It's a way to show respect to them, different than the informal language you would use instead when talking to your friends or those younger than you. One of these examples is that a guy would say hyung to an older guy and nuna to an older girl. A girl would say oppa to an older guy and unni to an older girl. Now that you know that, here's an example. Let's say Eugene and June were both born in 2002. Eugene was born in April and June was born in July. Using Korean age, they're both 21 in 2022, so they're friends, meaning they're the same age. Since they were born in the same year, they will always be the same age. This means they can use informal language to each other all they want. But what if we used international age here? In the beginning of the year, they'd both be 19, so they could still talk informally. But then in April, Eugene turns 20 first and is suddenly older than June. This means that June can no longer speak informally to Eugene and has to use honorifics. This would go on for three months until June also turns 20 and they're the same age again. If you hadn't noticed already, this would be incredibly chaotic in Korea. It would just be too much to keep track of. So in order to prevent this confusion, it'd be much easier to use Korean age instead, where speaking formally wouldn't matter at all here. Honorifics and age hierarchy are so deeply rooted in Korean society that it would nearly be impossible to eliminate Korean age. But it might happen. There are news that the new Korean president is looking at getting rid of Korean age for good. And although it's sad news, just because of how unique Korean age is, it'd definitely be a curious thing to witness. I'd imagine people would start using their birth years instead. And that's another common thing in Korea. Sometimes instead of saying our age, we just say our birth years. I've almost never seen that here in the US or Canada. It's so uncommon here that people will sometimes get confused if you say your birth year instead of your age. Want to know the weird things that can happen if you use Korean age? The story of how I skipped the age 14. Long story short, I moved around a lot between Korea, Canada, and the US. And since the age systems are different between the countries, my age also fluctuated drastically. So when I was supposed to be 14 in Korea, I was living in Canada. And when I was supposed to be 14 in Canada, I was living in Korea. So I never actually got to experience what it's like to be a 14 year old. So where did the extra year go? Turns out I lived two full years as a nine year old, one year in Korea and one in Canada. There are other examples too, like how I spent only five months as an 11 year old, but spent a year and a half as a 12 year old. And there are many more examples and these are only possible because of these different age systems. And that's exactly why some of my memories are based on Korean age while other memories aren't. For example, if you ask me when I first started elementary school, I might say eight, but when converted to international age, it would actually be six. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and understood the three different age systems that Korea uses. If you want to watch more, I would suggest this Korean Duolingo speedrun video, or if you want to learn Korean, how to read Korean in 20 minutes, both of which got pretty good reception. I'll see you in future videos. Thanks and goodbye. Thank you.